Just show of hands. All right. He's known as the great agnostic. Considered by many to be one of the best orators to ever live, except for Freddie D. Ingersoll was noted for his defense of agn agnosticism in many of his speeches and works. Joining us today is actor Sean O'Brien, who will be performing as Robert Ingersoll. Sean has taught, performed, and directed in theaters across the country. Let's welcome to the stage, Sean O'Brien. This guy is great. Liberty is my religion. Liberty of hand and brain, of thought and labor. Liberty is a word hated by kings and despots, loathed by priests and popes. Liberty is a word that shatters thrones and altars and leaves the monarch without subjects and the priest without congregation. Liberty is the blossom and fruit of justice, the perfume of mercy. It is, it is the light, the air, the seed, the soil, the dew, the rain of progress, love, and joy. We are controlled today by men who do not exist. We are controlled today by phenomena that never did exist. We are controlled today by ghosts and dead men. I propose that we should govern ourselves. I propose that we should let the past go and let the dead past bury the dead past. I believe that Americans have nerve enough and brains enough and courage enough to control and govern themselves without any assistance from dust or ghosts. We have already compared the benefits of theology and science. When the theologian governed, the world was full of huts and hovels for the many, palaces and cathedrals for the few. To nearly all the children of man, reading and writing were unknown arts. The poor were clad in rags and skins, they devoured crusts, and gnawed bone. The day of science dawned, and the luxuries of a century ago are the necessities of today. Men and women in the middle ranks of life have more of the conveniences and elegancies than the kings and princes of the theological times. And above, and more than this, is the development of mind. There is more of value in the brain of the average man or woman of today, the master mechanic, the chemist, the naturalist, the inventor, than there was in the brains of the world 400 years ago. These blessings did not drop from the sky. These benefits did not fall from the outstretched hands of priests. They were not found in cathedrals or behind altars, nor were they searched for with holy candle. They were not found in cathedrals. They were not discovered with the closed eyes of prayer, nor were they searched for with holy candle. These are the children of freedom, the blessings of 
the blessings of reason, observation, and experience. And for them all, man is indebted to man. It is contended by many that ours is a Christian government based upon the Bible and that all who view that book as false or foolish are destroying the foundations of our country. The fact is, our country is not founded upon the rights of gods, but upon the rights of men. Our constitution was not framed. We're getting a lot of wind. Our Constitution was not framed to declare and uphold the deity of Christ, but the sacredness of humanity. All laws for the purpose of making men worship God were born of the same spirit that kindled the fires, that burned the heretics, and lovingly built the dungeons of the Inquisition. All laws defining and punishing blasphemy, making it a crime to give your honest impression of the Bible, to laugh at the ignorance of the ancient Jews, to be happy during Lent, were passed by impudent bigots and should be immediately repealed by honest men. An infinite God should not have to protect himself by going into partnership with state legislatures. He should certainly not have to enact laws to prevent himself from being questioned or laughed at. We have heard talk enough. We have listened to all of the drowsy, empty, vapid sermons that we wish to hear. We have read your Bible and the works of your best minds. We have heard your prayers, your solemn groans, and your reverential amens. All of these amount to less than nothing. We want one fact. We beg at the doors of your churches for just one fact. We pass our hats along your pews and beneath your pulpits and implore you for just one fact. We know all about your moldy wonders and your stale miracles. We want this year's fact. We ask for only one. Give us one fact for charity. Your miracles are too ancient. The eyewitnesses have been dead for 2,000 years. Superstition has done enough harm already. Religion suspects everything that is pleasant, anything that is joyous, and they often have the notion that God feels best when we feel worst. They have stoned to death the joy of nature with the cold rock of ignorance and fear. Church and state are two vultures that have fed upon the heart of chained Prometheus. I say, let the human race have a chance. Let every man and woman think for themselves and express that thought. There is no wrath in the serene heavens. There is no scowl in the blue of the sky. Upon the throne of the universe, tyranny does not sit as king. That is my doctrine. And I will do what I can while I live to increase in the American people that feeling of independence and personhood. I believe in the gospel of this world. I believe in happiness right here. I do not believe in drinking skim milk all my life with the expectation of butter beyond the clouds. I believe in the gospel of this world. This is a mighty good world. There are many good people in this world. There's lots of happiness in this world. And I say, let us, as much as we possibly can, increase it. Our civilization is not Christian. It did not fall from the skies. It is not 
the result of divine inspiration. It is the child of invention, of discovery, of applied knowledge, that is to say, of science. When the human race becomes great and grand enough to admit that all have equal rights, when thought is untrammeled, when worship means the doing of useful things and religion means the discharge of obligation to one's fellow man, then and only then will the world be civilized. Thank you very much. <laughs>